This is your time. The time where you take risk. You take chances. Push everything aside that's telling you no. You have the possibility to shape your identity, to construct and build your life into the power you can achieve. Nothing here is stopping your progress except yourself. You're the only thing that's holding you back. If you want to become successful in life, number one, you got to change your mindset. He said, you don't get in life what you want, you get in life what you are. Develop your communication skills because once you open your mouth, you tell the world who you are. I believe that all of us are born unique, but most of us die copies. You gotta find out what is it that turns you on, what resonates with you. Uh, one of the things that I realized and what allowed me to become successful as a speaker, uh, the speaking industry has been hijacked by people who speak to sell, and it's, it's okay to do that and make money. I speak to change lives because somebody spoke and change my life. So this is my passion. This is my drive. This is something that I feel in my heart. And, and so the key to that hunger-driven life is a heart-centered life. I didn't do what I'm doing for years because of my programming, because of the culture in which I was raised in. I would see other people with, with degrees and PhDs and and MBAs and credentials I don't have, and I convinced myself I couldn't do it. But Mr. Washington, on that day, we became friends, and, and he taught me not only someone's opinion of you does, does not have to determine your reality, he said that you have to work on yourself, and you have to have an unstoppable attitude, and no excuse is acceptable, and you've got to, to make it a, a, a priority, a non-negotiable in your life and hold a, a constant vision of what it is you want to achieve. See it accomplished and go all out. Find a way to win in spite of the setbacks, in spite of the disappointments, in spite of your failures. I, I tell people when I'm giving presentations, you will fail your way to success. I have a saying is life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Never let a situation or circumstance define your life, no matter what it may be. And understanding that you got something inside of you that's greater than a situation or a circumstance, but you have to constantly believe it and not only believe it, you have to make decisions and choices every single day that puts you a step forward toward what you believe your destiny is. in life it's a lot of moments and it's a lot of people that change and impact your life right like i don't believe it's just one moment and you say this one moment just changed my life even though that moment may have but it's going to be another moment that's going to shape and change your life as well either somebody is in the midst of adversity or just came out of adversity or it won't be long before they head into adversity so you need to be prepared either way. And so we all go through adversity, opposition. I think that's the thing that, that makes us all in common as people, right? No matter if you're from London, Atlanta, Florida, California, New York, like we're all going to go through something at some point or phase in our life, right? And as cliche as it sounds, when a quote says, it's never about what happens to you, it's about how you respond to it. That's very true. Right. But in the same sense, I think what's most important is when we go through something, what's the perspective that we have of it? Right. Because for most people, when you go through something, the person's natural perspective is, OK, what did I lose? Right. What happened to me? Like I took a loss. Right. People never look at it and say, OK, man, tell me what did you gain? Right. Even though I know it hurt, you didn't want to go through it. But look at it in a way to where you can say, what's the lesson in this? Right? What would you say life is trying to teach you from dealing with this? And so when I went through it, my perspective was, okay, what can I extract from it to apply to other areas and aspects of my life that I feel can help other people? And I firmly believe the quicker you can shift 
your perspective from yourself to others, when you're in the midst of adversity, the quicker you'll get through it, right? Martin Luther King has a quote that says, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing to help other people? Now, I'm not telling you to not acknowledge your pain. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you not to say, man, I'm going through this and it's hard. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you go through it, look at it, step back from the picture and say, okay, I'm dealing with this. Nine out of 10 times, there's somebody else that's either dealt with it or they're gonna deal with something similar to this. And if I deal with it in the right way, I can use it to add value to lives of other people. When you live a hard-centered life, deciding that you're going to live a life that will outlive you. You're going to live a life that counts, a life that will build a legacy and change the planet. You know, Harz Mann said, we should be ashamed to die until we've made some major contribution to humankind. Get to know yourself. That I, I believe that we're taught, be ye not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't live the life that has been given you. When you go for a walk with someone, something happens without being spoken. He said either you adjust to their pace or they adjust to your pace. Whose pace have you adjusted to? And so there are things that we pick up and we think that they're our choices, but they're the choices that we've been programmed by life to, to do. I mean, we, when we leave our homes in the morning, we're bombarded with over 6,000 advertising hits through Facebook, through Twitter, through Instagram, through television, through our phones and through our communities uh, and through the computers. And so all of these things are impacting us every day. So if you don't have a program for your mind, then your mind is going to be programmed you'll find yourself doing things that you did not know and, and that they affected you, that they, through marketing techniques and strategies, that they will create a thirst within you. You've got to have someone that can see something in you that you can't see, that, that, that can take you to a place within yourself that you can't go by yourself. Stop overthinking everything so much. Realize that while you are trying to do a lot of things in your life at once and you are uh, trying to be better than you were yesterday, also realize you don't have to try to do anything. You just have to do and you just have to be. And you have to understand the concept of you're not actually really doing anything, you're being done. Each and every day is an opportunity to get something from the day rather than just going through the day. But there are a lot of things that we can't always control. We can't always control the temperature outside. We can't always control what the birds are doing or what the fish are doing or what the animals are doing. But we can control what we're doing. We can control who we're hanging out with. So in a sense, we can get some control over the anxiety that we have. And the way that we're gonna gain control over those things is think about some of the hurdles that we may have, some of the things that are blocking us from making quick, uh, quick action. The reason that um, I think belief is important is because like when you're young or when you do something and you're a novice, right? And you start out doing it and you might think you can do something with it or you might not. You might do it and it's being driven by your passion. And then somebody comes along that's a little bit older or even more experienced and they can see it in a way that you can't see it, right? And so I think it's important with belief because if a person believes in you in a way that you don't believe in yourself, you can rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own, right? And you use that person's belief to fuel you every single day, right? Because you can have a level of belief with what you're doing, but you can go back to a certain set of circumstances that tell you, nah, it's not going to happen. And so you rent that person's belief until you get strong enough to possess your own. Life is an adventure and it's going to be a challenge and get ready to, because you're going to fail your way to success. You're going to get slapped around by life and don't spend time complaining about it and telling everybody 80% don't care and 20% glad it's you.
I think the number one thing that keeps people from being successful is their fear. A whole bunch of different forms, you know. Um, sometimes it's about the people around you and how they'll perceive you, you know, because, you know, maybe you grew up in a household where, you know, things weren't accepted or, you know, maybe your parents didn't accomplish things and then they put that kind of insecurity on you. These are the things that I feel like sometimes uh, it, it prevents people from being who they want to be because all it takes is somebody wanting to take a step, you know. And there are certain things that a lot of people in this world are sitting there thinking in their minds and they're just not going to do. Like, I used to always try to pull a lot of people and be like, you know what, you can do this, you can do this. But the people that hear that motivation over and over again, sometimes they take that step. Some people just have it in them. Early, it just starts. And they just get in the muscle memory of just doing things. There's so many things in our lives that we were scared about, but we're still here. We made it past all these things. And if you fail, so what? You know, you start over. You do it again, but most people that that fear of failure is the thing that I think prevents them from like really, really being successful. And then also it's like a lot of other things that are just difficult to do. You know, when you tell people the answer to success, it's a lot of hard stuff. Let your success fill itself around you. Let it construct around you. You got to work hard, right? Nobody wants to hear that. Everybody wants a shortcut. You know, some people understand that they like they appreciate the progress, you know. If you tell people right now, hey, if you want to lose this many pounds, this is what you got to do. There's no short solution. But every time there's still people out there selling whatever Herbalife treatment or whatever to try to get you the quick, short route, because people believe that, you know what, I'm going to do it the easy way. And there is no easy way. Mm -hmm. So when I tell people that, it's very blunt. It's very straight to it. You have to want to do it. But the, the best way I try to explain it is like, you know, when you're chiseling on a rock, you know, you can chisel for a long time. And you can chisel a hundred times, 200 times, 300 times, and it won't break. And then when you get to 5,000 times, it finally breaks. But all the work that you did is what made it break. It's not like you just, the last one just broke it. You know what I mean? It, it takes that, but sometimes people don't want to start that journey. You know, they don't want to get on the mission of like, you know, becoming the best that they can be. Move away from your past and move toward a new purpose. A purpose that gives you the success you've always wanted. The success that leads you to a future you deserve. Bring your life into the direction you want. The direction to change your perception, your perspective. This is the power you've earned. Don't let yourself be taken by one more mistake. Don't let yourself slip from one more wasted opportunity. Have the confidence to take action. Have the confidence to appreciate the decisions you make, to make every choice with the purpose, with the purpose to change, to improve. As a collective, a society, we all want similar things. We all want to succeed, to improve, to be better people. We all slip, but that's how life functions. That's the only way for us to learn. You can be more. You can have more. I feel like we spend way more time in our own minds than we do talking to other people. Like you really spend a lot of time trying to figure it out. There's all these thoughts that come to you, whether it's like, you know, things around you, people talking to you, people close to you, uh, things you see, TV, whatever. And you're, you're, you're bringing in all these different things, trying to figure out your path in life, you know? So I think it starts with having some like real uh, understanding of what your strengths are. It's, it's about being honest. You know, a lot of people just aren't honest with themselves. You, you're telling yourself this thing, but you, you like, there's so many people that say, oh, I'm gonna be an entrepreneur, I'm gonna do this. And, and if you really dive down into deep, they don't really believe it, you know? And it's, that's okay, you can unlock that, but you have to figure out how to unlock it. There's a conscience that's sitting right here telling you this thing and you try to brush it off. You have to be very honest with yourself. And then if you're not, that doesn't mean you can't succeed. It means that now you're very honest and knowing you're not as good, then you can work on getting good. But if you think you're already good at it, you don't work on it. So I spent a lot of time just reflecting on like, man, what am I good at? Like I used to think like I'm going to the NBA, you know, I was unrealistic about it. You know, you start to see people that are way bigger, way faster. And you're not telling yourself the truth. You're just like, no, nah, I'm going to the NBA. You start with doing what you're passionate about, right? Because there are a lot of people that are going through life right now trying to figure it out. Like, man, I don't know what I want to be. I don't know. Like, I was at that moment. It's not about money. I want to make it very clear. The money will come if you focus on passion, you focus on information and relationship. And I'm going to stand on the top of the mountain and sing that all day. And hopefully it has a real impact on people's lives. And I'm going to feel good about that. 
I'm not gonna feel good if I go to the grave as being the only person with the information and the money and I just had all this money. I'm gonna feel good if I'm able to impact a lot of people and that, that don't have access to this information and a good life, a quality life, and they have one. That, that's awesome, that makes me feel real good. I think the true measure of wealth is, uh, is happiness, right? Like I really do. And that's not saying that I'm against money. I'm not against that at all. Because you gotta, you gotta work hard, make your money to take care of your family and be able to bless people. But I think it's a lot of people with so-called wealth and they don't have joy and they don't have happiness, right? And I feel like joy, happiness is peace and peace is the most important things we can possess, right? And for most people, their material possessions, they feel are the most important. For me, when you got joy, when you got peace, when you got happiness, I think that's true wealth because you can't put a price on that. Having a purpose is that thing that, that makes us tick, that gets us up every day and gets us over the hump of opposition and adversity. And the reason that I champion adversity and opposition is because I think for the most part in life, people pretty much know what to do when things go right, right? Like when things go right, they know how to feel, they know how to act, how to react. But it's when that opposition and that adversity comes and it creates a level of misunderstanding, right? Now the vision is blurred. Now you don't have clarity about what you're supposed to do. Now you question if your existence matters. And I think when you have a purpose, it's powerful because in the midst of the opposition, it makes you realize that you've been put here for a certain reason. You can be great, but you're living on reserve, right? You didn't, you didn't empty the bucket, right? You didn't give everything you had to every aspect of your life. Like for most people, they're great professionally, but they end up becoming a public success and behind closed doors, they're private failure. Not because they don't have the talent or the skill set, they don't have the character, right? That they can apply it and be consistent in every aspect of their life and empty out everything they got to everything, right? Now one would say, okay, well, when do you turn it back, right? You find pockets to turn it back, right? Of course, you don't just give everything you got all the time. Right? You get to a point where you learn to be efficient and effective in every aspect of your life. And for most people, it's not a problem of skill set. It's a problem of character. And empty the bucket is having the right character to be consistent and empty out everything you've got in every aspect of your life. Either somebody is in the midst of adversity or just came out of adversity or it won't be long before they head into adversity so you need to be prepared either way and so we all go through adversity opposition i think that's the thing that that makes us all in common as people right no matter if you're from london atlanta florida california new york like we're all going to go through something at some point or phase in our life right and as cliche as it sounds when a quote says it's never about what happens to you it's about how you respond to it that's very true right but in the same sense i think what's most important is when we go through something, what's the perspective that we have of it, right? Because for most people, when you go through something, the person's natural perspective is, okay, what did I lose, right? What happened to me? Like, I took a loss, right? People never look at it and say, okay, man, tell me what did you gain, right? Even though I know it hurt, you didn't want to go through it, but look at it in a way to where you can say, what's the lesson in this, right? What would you say life is trying to teach you from dealing with this? And so when I went through it, my perspective was, okay, what can I extract from it to apply to other areas and aspects of my life that I feel can help other people? And I firmly believe the quicker you can shift your perspective from yourself to others when you're in the midst of adversity, the quicker you'll get through it, right? Martin Luther King has a quote that says, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing to help other people? Now, I'm not telling you to not acknowledge your pain. I'm not saying that. I'm not telling you not to say, man, I'm going through this and it's hard. I'm not saying that. I'm saying when you go through it, look at it, step back from the picture and say, okay, I'm dealing with this. Nine out of 10 times, there's somebody else that's either dealt with it or they're going to deal with something similar to this. And if I deal with it in the right way, I can use it to add value to lives of other people.
Like when we go through a situation and circumstance, it's easy to step back and think, man, I just went through this and it's just my experience. I firmly believe when we go through things, it's for us to deal with it, get over it and reach back over the hill to help another person. And a lot of times, like you said, when you're trying to work through it, you think, man, how can I help somebody? And I'm trying to get through it myself, right? And that's a great perspective, right? But when you get through it, right? Maybe you can't help them when you're in the midst of it because you're processing it. But when you get over the hill, I think it's important and I think it's vital that you reach back over the hill and help somebody that may be going through a similar situation and you can share your values and principles with them because that experience that we go through and we deal with is not just for us. Before the sun rises is the time of least distraction. Before the sun rises where you can build intimacy and fluency with what you want to stand for in your day. Before the sun rises, the luxury and tranquility of the early morning hours, you can do that deep inner work that will allow you to go out in the world and, and play at your best. We live in a world where a lot of people are busy being busy, but what's the point of being busy around climbing the wrong Mount Everests? And so clarity is one of the DNAs of mastery. But if you look at the greatest billionaires, if you look at the greatest producers on the planet, these people have one thing in common. They are ridiculously curious. And no matter how much money they make and no matter how much impact they have, they maintain a white belt mentality. One of the keys to epic performance is a relentless commitment to daily growth. As you begin your day, so you handcraft the rest of your day. And if you have consistently great days, you're gonna have consistently great weeks, quarters, year, and a lifetime. We live in a world that suggests the doorway to success it swings outward. If you build the business, if you get the jet, if you get the money, if you get the cars, if you get the beautiful spouse, then you're going to be happy. What I believe, and there's a model in the 5AM Club that I think is a very disruptive model, but it's a transformational model. And it's called the Four Interior Empires. And it's not just mindset, it's mindset, heart set, hell set, and soul set. But I worked on those Four Interior Empires when I was a very unhappy litigation lawyer. Like, I'd made money, I was successful, I had two law degrees, and yet I'd wake up every morning, Tom, and I'd go into the bathroom mirror and I'd look at myself and I was a completely empty person. And nothing is more expensive than losing your joy and your peace of mind. And so what I did was I started working on myself. You know, I worked on my mindset and I read all the books and I went to the courses, but that's only your psychology. And I think that's one of the missing links in our field, which is everyone's talking about mindset. But mindset is just your belief system. It's just your psychology. It's very important, but that's 25% of the personal mastery equation. I believe the second piece is your heart set. And I worked on that purifying your heart. That's your emotionality, not just your psychology. You're never going to make history dominate your domain and handcraft a world-class life if you've got a great psychology but you're carrying the pain and sadness, disappointment and trauma of the past. So I worked on my heart set, your health set. Don't die. If you want to change the world, like dead people don't change the world. What have you done today to be different? What have you done to step outside the conventions that you set for yourself? The conventions and the rules set by your past. Today, you have the power to move on. Today, you have the power to move away from your past and move towards a successful future. This is your decision, your call to make in your future. This is how your life can gain its own direction. And this is where your life can be so much more, so much better. You can make it better. You have always had the potential to take one more step, the potential to take the risks others are too scared to take because you are more and you are stronger and you have the determination and the courage to be so much more. Know how to be someone better, to look for something better, to become someone with the purpose, to constantly look for change, to always look for somewhere to improve, for somewhere to be better because this is where you begin. 
You own your success, so let it take control. Take control of your life and take control of your power. This is where the power is in your control. Get after it. You go out in the world every single morning. People might ridicule you because every genius is ridiculed before they're revered. People might throw stones at you, but you use them to build monuments of mastery. People might not understand you because any disruptor is going to be misunderstood. And even if you're an army of one, a Galileo or a Steve Jobs or a Phil Knight, you continue at all costs. But it all starts with who you are because you'll never rise any higher than what's going on within you. What terrifies you most go directly there because discomfort is simply growth in wolf's clothing. To lead and to become a great hero or an everyday hero, the doorway is through embracing our suffering and doing difficult things. I think pleasure has been promoted too much in our society, like no great titan of industry, no legendary cellist, no great athlete, you know, the great ones all understand that suffering is the price of greatness. So how do we become braver? You, you, you do the difficult things that you don't feel like doing, but you know have the payoff. You know, be crazy. The great leaders are insane. And I say that they're insane to the majority. The great ones are all misfits and they're all weird. I mean, the very nature of being a disruptor and a leader means you're not a follower. And if you're not a follower, then you're not buying the Kool-Aid that society sells you. If you're not a follower, you're not like this all the time looking for likes. If, if, if you're not a follower, you dress the way you want to dress. If people criticize you, yeah, they criticize all the great ones. Critics are nothing more than dreamers who got scared and never got off their chairs and got back in the game. So you've got to be willing to be, to 5 a.m. Weird, who does that? Why not sleep? Leaders have to be willing not to be followers. Stop blaming others. Stop blaming people for the reasons you find yourself in now. Stop blaming your situation. Stop blaming your parents. Stop blaming the government. Stop blaming your genetic. Stop blaming your finances. Stop blaming your past. Claw yourself back into the light. Stop blaming everybody else. The only person you can truly blame is you because you are the only person who can get yourself out of it. Live life a victor, not a victim. You might even be right. You might be poor because of your parents or broken because of your relationship you were in. But what does blaming people or society do for you? It will keep you in the same hole and all you're doing is digging the hole even more. It's because your situation where you right now hasn't changed. In order to go forward and to get out of the hole is growth. Instead of bringing other people down to your level, build yourself up to them. Claw yourself out of that hole and you will get to see the sun once again. Massive success is how you prove people wrong and prove yourself right. The only way you get upstream is to swim against the current. You're permanently ruining your future. You're halting your progress. Life is made not to be easy. Not one's life is ever easy. How did you ever think you were ever going to make any progress? You can make this your time. You can take control of the life you want to live. Have the authority to know what you need to change. To know how to change and then to take action. Have discipline for yourself into progress. Switch your routine. Make your life hard. Difficult situations force you to make improvements, force you to learn, to educate yourself. Prove this to yourself. Make others jealous. Make yourself jealous.
Like you're gonna only be so pretty, you're only gonna be so smart, like, you, like th- there's, there's things that are gonna be natural and then there's things that you can actually control. I do believe, and I don't know if I'm right or wrong, I don't, but I do believe that work ethic is a taught behavior. It's something you do have more control over. I feel like there's a shift that can make people work harder. The big one that I push is you're gonna die. Like, like if you're complaining, like to me, life is broken down into complaining and not. So if you're not complaining, well then I have no, I have no advice for you. I'm, I'm pumped, like you did it. We're beating ourselves up. Like everybody sucks at something, right? Like we all have shortcomings and we all have strengths. And for me, it's like, why don't we just audit that? Like why don't we just look at it that way and be like, all right, well I'm good at this, but I'm not good at that. Like. And then, and, then, and then I only focus what I'm good at, right? Like, I don't dwell that I can't fix shit around the house. I call somebody to fix it. Don't lose yourself on the way to the top. There'll never be a better you than you. Rarely is it a question of talent or technique. It's just one of belief and the concomitant will to kind of do something that either no one's done before or even more, I think, to crack open the barriers that people consider impossible or undoable. And that kind of belief, I think, is rarer than talent. Talent is, it's around. And to have them both at those levels, there's only a few people that, that really have that, I think, in the history. They're the ones that have really changed things. When you're looking at everything, it's such a gift to be able to look at something and to love it for the sake of it. And nurturing and maintaining that is one of the hardest tests of any pro, much less for anyone to find, right? What is the Beethoven who never found his piano or harpsichord or, right? There's days you want to go out, it hurts or you're sore or you just suck. You, you're, you're not making progress. You're ramming into the, and you feel defeated. But that's, that's the nature of love, you know? It's got hate in there, you know? It's got pain in there. And it draws you to it. That's the magnetism. I see people with talent, with all those things, but the one thing they don't have is that just love for doing it for the sake of it. And the sense of obligation to do something with what you're given. You know, there's something to that. It's important. I think getting what you want quenches the fire that got you there often. Unless it's something replaced by something more permanent, which becomes more intangible. I think the successes of winning, right? You want to be the best in the neighborhood and then win the local contest and then whatever, whatever. It's, it just keeps going up and then by the time you get there, you can have a stadium screaming your name. It's actually happened a couple of times to me. And there is a visceral exhilar- exhilaration to it. There is. I've experienced that. I know what that's like. You land a trick and there's, it just lights up. It's crazy. But at the same time, it's hollow. It's hollow, that's not the thing that can drive you, at least not for long. It's being able to say, oh, I had that, I had a model, or I had people autograph, whatever, all of these honors. Eventually, that stuff fades to just static, and you're left with you and you're bored. And if you decide that that's what you love, that's what you're doing, then your days are numbered. And so the trick is to always peel back of why am I doing this in the first place? It is easy to say, and I think it's smothering to say, and often there's a culture of saying that if, if it cannot be proven, it must not be possible. And the big takeaway from that theorem is that there's lots of things that cannot be proven, though they are correct. Because we see things so often in front of us the way that it should be done and it imposes a kind of barrier through what people know and see, a familiarity. But maybe you can change something within you that can be just outside a new set of axioms 
some new skill set that will take you further. And I think that that's the history of development. It's interesting how getting what you think you want can end up being the force that pushes you into, paint yourself into a corner, pushes you into a roof. There's something terrible to be top of the mountain, I'm the best, I'm the king, guarding it. The Nietzsche quote, right? What's left for you when you make it to the top? But lightning, you know? It's this admixture. It's everybody has a unique set of variables that they can put in place and express their individual identity in a form of, call it greatness. That's something to be remembered. That's what you look for. So if there's anything, just find joy in what you do for the sake of it. And then recognize how you're being shaped in the process and hopefully you become a better man through it. You know? It's not fair. It's not fair your car broke down. It's not fair your friend passed away. It's not fair you were bullied. It's not fair that your business failed. It's not fair you lost all your money and it's not fair that she left you. It's not fair because life is not fair. So now you know it's not fair. What are you gonna do? You've already complained about it. Are you gonna keep whining or are you going to take accountability for it? Because what's more whining going to do? What's more complaining gonna do? It's not gonna change the fact that life can be unfair at times. So what do you need to do? You need to stop complaining, stop whining, stop playing the victim and stop feeling sorry for yourself. And start taking control, start being accountable, start taking responsibility, start changing your situation. Stop complaining about your life and start working on changing your life. Success does not come to those who complain. Success comes to those who change their circumstances when needed. You're not weak. You're power. You can change your circumstances. Circumstances don't make you. You make your circumstances. Do what you can with what you have and where you are. No one said work 20%. No one said try a little less. Wake up with your own message in your head. The message that inspires you. Inspires you to work harder. Strive for success. Stop waiting for the right time. The right time is now. Take it now. Work now. Be creative. Be strong. Be successful. What do you want to do right now? Do something meaningful. Meaningful with worth. Something that will impact your life. Impact it for the better. Make it better. You have it in you. Do what you can now. Full of ambition. Fulfilled to 100%. No more than that, break down the walls that contain you, imprison you from achieving everything you have ever wanted. Surround yourself with people who lift you up, people who can see you rise. People who can see you move forward, not holding you back. People who move with you, not moving against you. So finding friends of similar character and heart, that's important to me. I strive for that. Be the person you need to become. Feel the strength you've always wanted to feel. See your courage as a superpower. A superpower to help you progress, to boost your confidence, boost your life, upgrade it to be better, more fulfilling life. One where you and only you are in control. What you do in these reflexive couplings shapes you. You shape it, it shapes you. You don't disconnect from that. You just tumble forward. Over time, you become what you do. And you find, hopefully, at the end of that process, you're not insufferable. 
that you actually have something to give and can be present, you know? So for all I've done, I appreciate, I don't look at it as much, but ultimately it just goes out there. It's just what you do. You just become one with that. I think that's been a key for me of why I've been able to sustain this fire that's so seemingly easily quenched. And so when I see people who have had success, I see boredom for the most part in them. And then I see a tombstone. And circling back to what trophies and those things represented, right? Feynman, great physicist, said that is the Nobel Prize would be the tombstone on all great work. Just look at it. I haven't done a study of Academy Awards, right? But usually when you get what you thought you wanted, the fire goes away. I'm honored to have had the rippling impact that I have helped formulate the language of a community where others can help shape and express themselves in a process and connect. That to me, for people like me, that doesn't come easily. But ultimately, I just want to be a good man, you know? You ever hear that goofy internet thing of found it? It's the stupid stuff that people send you. Can you name the last Nobel Prize winners and Olympians, right? But you can name the fifth grade teacher that had faith in you, right? It's the people you touch singularly. That's a bigger test in a way. What does it take to be the best? Everything. <laughs> Everything. You can't, uh, you're going to have self-doubts. Uh, you're going to have uh, tough moments, you're going to have everything, you know, you're going to have uh, people talking bad about you, people putting you down, getting cut, you know, uh, it takes getting up in the morning and doing the same thing, you know, uh, I understand people talk about a lot of mental toughness, right, uh, mental toughness, you meditate and stuff, for me, honestly, mental toughness is getting up in the morning and doing the same thing, day in and day out, day in and day out for whatever it takes, whatever that goal is, you know? And by doing that, you become the best, you know? And it takes everything, I mean, you have to, I mean, the three S's that I love, you know, suffer, you know, a sacrifice. Suffer, sacrifice, equal success. You gotta suffer, you know? It's gonna be, it's gonna suck, you know? Like, I mean, I work, what, 15 hours a day, I'll get up, you know? And then trying to stay in shape. Imagine that, as a 17-year-old European in Boston who spoke English, there was a lot of suffer, a lot of sacrifice, you know, I didn't have any friends or girlfriend or any, anywhere to go, right? I was just working, 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 and then success came, you know, later because I had built this foundation. So it takes everything, you know, but it's not for long. You know, people think that uh, to be great or to be something really good, it's a lifetime. It's not, you know, because once you achieve that, that's another thing, right? But by building the right foundation, day in and day out, you achieve something and that leads to another thing, opens up to a to different level. It takes everything, you know, and what is everything is your mind and your body. You know, people are wishful thinkers, you know, I want to be the best, I want to be rich, I want to lose weight, whatever that, you know, the wishful thinking is, you know, but they hate to take the steps or they take the steps and it's hard. You know, change is hard, you know, um, changing your body, changing your mind is very hard, you know, and people stop and people come to a certain point, they break. So everything is making up your mind mentally and not giving up, but also physically pushing through your hardship, you know, when it hurts. To be an Olympian, right, you spend four years for two weeks or maybe one week because you might lose and get out. So it's a, you know, it's a crazy work, workforce and discipline and mindset, right? So to be able to play in Greece and then go have a chance to go to China, I was blown away by my, by my ability, right? When you call about self-doubt, I'm like, there's no self-doubt then. I'm like, man, I, now I'm the man, you know? So I was the captain, I was at the peak of, you know, the peak of my career. Uh, we just lost in, in Athens and as a group, we we're a young group that joined the team in 2000. We we're young in Athens and then we made a pact to ourselves that we're gonna win gold in China. We actually made a plan, how, when, why, right? And we went to work, and we went to work and slowly, you know, uh, build that, that foundation and in 2007 I, I was in Italy playing for the best team, I was a captain making a ton of money and then I turned 
and then my Achilles snapped. I fall down in tremendous pain because there's two ways to rupture the Achilles. One comes out, you can walk and go to the doctor, or the second one is the hardest thing, it snaps in half. So I fall down and I see my foot hanging and I can't move my toes, my, I mean my toes. I'm, like, I'm trying to and I can't, I'm just crying because there's so much pain and shock. Mm. The doctor comes in, you know, puts his finger in the Achilles and just, you know, I mean, there was just harsh pain. And I was like, oh, it's your Achilles. And I knew it then, Tom, that Beijing is done. I and mean, when he said that, I was like, no. And I just burst in tears. I'm like, man, seven years to build this, you know, the truly American dream and hardship, it's over in a matter of one minute. My self-doubt was like, I'm done with the USA team. And that scared me, you know, because for me, that was the most important thing. Not professionally, not the money, you know, being part of the USA team and that group of guys and that, you know, that amazing tournament is just, you know, there's nothing like that in life, you know, because I already experienced it in Greece and now I'm the captain of the team. So that was the number one self-doubt and that, you know, kind of stroke of fear. I mean, I had to sit 26 days with a leg up above your heart not move anything and a lot of thoughts came to my mind you know i mean thoughts about quitting i was 32. thank god it wasn't social media back then so <laughs> you know can be good you know good and bad right but you know friends were supportive but they're like you know man 32 you know maybe take the real estate test you know maybe think about the future maybe think about that and then once all these people start doubting and start pushing me away you know even my parents you know my, my parents were still conservative in working on a small job you know in in a small town, say, you know, son, I mean, awesome, man, you made it, like, what else do you want, you know, like, you're the man, like, you know, for Albanian, that, you know, you're God. And I said, but I want to be the best player in the world, and I didn't achieve that dream, you know, since 11, since 9, right, I'm like, my dream has been to be the best in the world, so why this injury will stop? So I started researching, I said, what is the comeback time for Achilles? I started doing a lot of research, and I started, um, I made a bet with myself, it was weird. One of these nights, you know, uh, in Italy, as I got better, I had to wait two, three months to fly back to USA. I was drinking wine, you know, and I couldn't walk, you know, still with, with crutches. And I said, you know what? It's gonna be a test between me and Achilles. And honestly, I mean, I was like, I made a bet with myself. I'm like, who's gonna win? So my mind started working on that moment, on that moment of like, okay, how long does it take? What work do I have to do? How to do it, where? And then once I had the plan, I just wake up every morning. I was the first one at the USA team and ice and stretch and the last one to go. So it was just a simple bet, me or, me or the leg, and I won. At the Olympic team, every four years, the summer of Olympics, the coach comes in, brings all the guys, about 30, 40 guys that try out for you know, four years, and then he sits down and tells the team who makes it or not. It's a very, very ruthless decision, right? And um, the coach comes in and he said, you know, put the list of a team. And I, I got upset the first time, Tom, that I became Albanian, man. I, 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 the Albanian of me came out and I was just became angry and loud. I'm like, what the, f you know, like, why, you know, why the f are you cutting me? Like, you know, are you, are you stupid? Are you crazy? And I'm cussing at the coach. He's like, he gets it. Thank God, you know, he took the high road, you know, just calm me down. And we're just talking for two hours and, and I was crushed, you know, like I kind of, went back to that old mentality, you know, and that summer I kind of gave up, you know, that summer I was just drinking, playing beach volleyball for fun. It was weird. It was just very odd mix of feelings. I didn't know how to control them. I had no idea. Back then I was engaged and then break up with my, with my fiance too. I started doubting everything, right? And um, my Italian team that I was playing had a big contract for three years, massive amount of money. And they cut me, they said, we don't want to pay you, you know, you're not ready yet. I'm like, I'm ready, look at me, I'm jumping, I'm running. No, you're done. So that month of August was, um, it was very dark, 2008. I made the dream, I was top of the mountain, and then it was not a roller coaster. I mean, it took a second, I was nobody. I just wanted to kind of get lost, forget about Europe, USA team, and, and everything. I should, I should be on my own. It was the best medicine ever, you know, because that's where you really find yourself. You gotta hit rock bottom when they say it, right? And uh, I realized that I was blaming everybody else but myself. I was like, man, I blame the coach, my fiance, the team, the Italian manager, everybody but me. First time in my life that I was, maybe I'd become too cocky or confident, I don't know. 
But I realized I was blaming everybody else but myself. So I made another bet with myself. I said, I'll never, from this moment on, I'll never allow anybody or anything else to dictate my life. It's gonna be my way. And I called the coach, I'm like, I wanna try out. I was 33, 34, the coach was like, are you crazy? I'm like, I wanna try out. You put me at the bottom of the list, I wanna earn it back. And went to work, instead of getting a crappy contract, I went to Italy, got a cheap contract, and I proved myself again, and I became the best seller in the world. You gotta hit that, you know, it's about experience, Tom. I think like if you don't have that experience, if you're not uh, confident to go through those experiences, right? People, when, the people, when people go through tough times, they protect themselves. They go into the shell, right? Because and we as humans, as you know, you know, our mind, you know, from back, back in the day, it was, like, it was to protect yourself, you know, from fire, from fighting. So human mind is always kind of like, being to, you know, risk is not good for you, you know, to go hike over the mountain, right? It's bad for you, right? Everything is bad. And I was like, no, no, no. I mean, I, can do, I have to take this risk. I have to push myself. I have to uh, suffer, you know, I have to sacrifice in order to achieve that success. Otherwise, I'll never be that guy that I wanted to. Um, first of all, to get up every day and outwork others, you know? Uh, being a great teammate, you know, being a great part of whatever team it is, you know, whatever, wherever you are, at school, with your friends, at sports, you know, being a great person around your teammates, you know, and uh, lastly, it's like don't burn bridges, I told my kids, you know, because I was, I went through a lot of ups and downs, you know, so I, I you know, I burned a few bridges by mistake, I, you know, I, I've mended those bridges now, you know, I went back and apologized, you know, because I was in a dark space, but, you know, I said, you know, it's, you're as good as a person next to you, you know? You're as good as that mentor or business person or teacher or coach, you know? You know, you know alone is very hard to make it, you know? People will actually help you if you ask for help, but you gotta show them that you are hardworking and a good person. And then success always comes, whatever that is, monetary or passion or whatever that is for you, you know? It always comes if you do that work. But it's not gonna come to you, nobody's gonna give it to you. But, you know, when things are hard, when you're in a dark place, there's still light, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, switching your mentality, you know, switching that thought process and continue to work for the right thing. And it's not scary. Just because they sound scary, they're not scary, you know. It's just the way you look at them. You gotta get down this mountain. I see that fear and I'm like, I'm running right through it. You know, there's nothing that's gonna help me. Just times I'm flying in the plane, I'm like, this plane may go down. But, you know, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with dying. Like, that's because now it's like I'm doing, I know I'm doing everything I possibly can every single day to inspire and impact the people around me. And if I die, I know that I've done my part as much as I possibly can. That's, a, that's the driving force of like every day, like pushing myself. And um, that's when I was like, I want to step up as a, as more, as a, more as a role model for this generation and be a better leader. And let me tell you, how, let me tell you, if I was able to do it, you can too, you know, and you, but you need to start making that choice. You need to make that choice right now for yourself. Figure out their, their, you know, their why, man. It's, it really comes down to that. But you know, that's the truth. It's figuring out what really, why are they doing it and what really truly drives them to solve this problem. It's definitely, it's definitely tough for them and the entrepreneurs have the, definitely have their lows and the, um, a lot of, some of them don't make it, you know, some of them break and they're like, ah, this isn't for me. And can anyone become a great entrepreneur? Yes. Do they, do they have what it takes? Are they willing to do whatever it takes? Um, a lot of people give up. And that's just the, you know, that's just the truth. And you have to be resourceful. You have to be willing to get your hands dirty and do a little bit of everything in the beginning. But then it's like, okay, really buckle down and like figure out like, what am I really, really passionate about? What am I really great at? What is that one thing that I can do the very best on my team to add the most value? Figuring out, okay, who do, who do you really need? You know, who are the people that you need, you know, around you and what are you really, truly great at? 
it's, it's extremely important today that you understand how to share your story, how to document the process, how to put that out, how are people discovering you in today's day and age, consistently day in and day out. You need to surround yourself with the right energy, the right people like that are, that are as passionate as you, like-minded people, that positivity and that energy is infectious. Like we live in this day and age where like social media is so strong, right? You know, and it could do so many great things and connect. But like really digging into like what, why, you know, why are you here? Like what do you, like what do you want to give to the world? You know, and are you really f discovering that within yourself? Because there's so much consumption happening on a daily basis because of social media and everything. You can get so caught up on like living a script of what you think you should be doing rather than digging down inside yourself and shutting off all the noise and like figuring out like what is it that you you know what, what is it that you really want to do and what is it that you want to give to the world and uh, i think that millennials right now a lot of them you know haven't figured out who they really are and like because of the and 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 then and then their fear they fear they fear how people are going to judge them and what they look like and all that stuff instead of like really figuring out who they really are not trying to be something that they're not and and then starting living a true authentic life and putting that out i'm not afraid to fail you know for me there's nothing more powerful than creating something and if it's going wrong like solving okay how, let's pivot let's figure out why it's not working and continuing until you know we actually have built something that people you know, see value in. Believe in something, hold heartily and follow that with faith and courage to just go and, and no matter what, be able to also, um, I think for me, leading is picking up the people around me and putting them before myself. Um, caring about everybody around me and, and putting them in a position to thrive and just to see before myself and basically leading by example um, of how you live your life. Leadership to me is, a, is character, you know, who you are, not what you do. When you make a decision, you can't just walk away from the decision and say it's somebody else's problem. The ability to embrace failure is, is a, is for me, it's a strength, I think. Um, and, uh, but I, but I, I, I'm not a quitter. And so if you have the two, you're not afraid to fail, and, but you don't quit when you fail, I think that's a pretty decent combination. I, I think it's important to avoid that pitfall. You have to surround yourself with people um, who approach things differently. Uh, who challenge you. We, we know that we have the ability to change the world. We know that we've already taken steps in that direction. If we don't follow it to the end game, people like you and me will wind up feeling totally unfulfilled and frustrated. You break it down to the, to the problem, identify the root cause, and then you try and engineer a solution to the root cause of the problem. You take a series of steps so that that failure isn't a fatal failure. If I can identify a problem early on, and then if I have, if I have help getting to the root cause, I can address the root cause problem with one step or another to make that no longer a lethal problem. Uh, but the, uh, the fact is that if you're good enough to see an impending failure and address it, it's a hell of a lot cheaper and it's a hell of a lot easier and you get to sleep a lot earlier um, if you can do it before it goes completely haywire. What's the solution? The problem is identified, focus on the solution and come up with a, with a series of options. Leadership is about vision, and responsibility. It's not all about power. So you want to be a leader? You want to take control? Then I'll tell you what, use your vision. Use your vision to take control of your life and change your perspective on life and change your perspective on what power means to you. Because leadership is so much more than just authority and power. You got to take action for the better and not just be selfish for your own means. To be a leader, you have to take responsibility. 
Not just when you make mistakes, but then also to embrace them afterwards, to make them and take control of them and then even make them part of your leadership. You gotta do this in order to live honestly and free from fear of others' approval. Be the leader of your own life first. Go ahead and write out the instructions for your own life and use them to take your journey to step on the right path. The right path towards success because with that success, you're going to be fueled and pushed automatically towards leadership. Be sure to control your potential as well. The potential that uses success to make your future a place where you live with courage and a life without fear of mistakes or limits. You wear the pants in your own life, so take what I'm telling you and use it to upgrade your life. You're going to want to use this to improve your future. You have that power. You have that potential. So use it. Use it for the better. Control your actions because your actions that you make right now define your future. And how do you see your future? You see it successful, full of life, fueled with potential. I mean, if that's what you want. And if that's what you want, then you're gonna need to take action right now because otherwise you're gonna get to a point where you realize you don't have the time left to make the progress that you need to make. You're gonna soon realize that you have no time left because your future is now. So what are you gonna choose to do? I want you to grasp your life by the horns and I want you to stare it in its eyes. Stand up to your future, stand up to your success, use your work now to boost and upgrade your future later because it's gonna matter then. You might feel tired now, but then it is going to matter and make a world of a difference and you're going to thank yourself. So take the time now to make your life better for you and only you. Right now, right now is the time to make it in a life where you live in this very moment, right here, right now. Stop thinking of everybody else. Stop seeking everyone else's approval and seek your own approval. Be proud of yourself. Listen to what I just said. Be proud of yourself. Guarantee success for yourself and only yourself. You are the only person that you have to answer to. Switch your mindset to the future. Switch your mindset to the future where you are successful, where you can see yourself with everything that you've ever wanted, doing everything that you have ever wished you could do, doing everything that you've ever needed to do. This is the time when you make that happen. All you need is belief. The belief that you can succeed. The belief that you can learn, educate yourself. You have the power, the power to push the part of you that sheltered yourself from this progress, that didn't allow you to grow and get stronger. You can be better. You can change to be better, to be stronger, and become the person you need to be. Transform into the person with respect, respect for themselves, respect for the decisions you make appreciation for the progress you're making. How are you going to make this transition? Are you willing to change? Do you want to change? In order for you to succeed, you need to switch your mindset. You need to know that you want it. Be honest with yourself. Be honest with your mistakes. You have one tool. It's called time. Taste the opportunity and feel the success, feel the power.